Good morning. Good morning.
right. Good morning. Good morning. There you are. Good morning. Hear me, Christy? Yes. I was just talking to the Louisville Convention and Visitors Bureau. They were wanting to get a sense of sort of where we are. And I told them that, well, we're sort of in a holding pattern until we can get some additional data on where are we in terms of reopening and convenings and guidelines, but probably more importantly, where are school districts when right. it comes to reopening and how are Head Start programs mirroring that? So. We should see. That's the million dollar question. Right, exactly. Let's see here. Rhonda, how is the beach? Beautiful. I'm jealous. Perfect weather. It was beautiful. I've been to Panama City several times, but that is the clearest I've ever seen that water. Wow. There was no seaweed. That's perfect. Let me know what works. There we go. Like we're getting a pretty diverse group on. Give it a few more minutes and see if we can get other people on the line here. Body has experienced a terrible shock. The brain All right, we'll give it a few more minutes. It's 1101, but I wanna make sure everybody has time to log on. Yeah, I'm counting, I may be miscounting, I'm counting 11 or 12. May have just picked up another one. Perfect. All right, I will go ahead and get started because um, as we're doing roll call, um, we might have a few others join and I can always go back. So, good um, morning, mid afternoon, what morning, whatever it is for you all. Um, I really appreciate you hopping on today. We had a great 
board meeting the other day, but it did run a little long. So I understand people have other obligations and had to jump off, but we do have some voting items that we needed to take care of. Um, so, you know, I always like to share tidbits of information. I want to make your time valuable. Wanted to show you one of the things we have partnered with our local um, community theater, because guess what? They need money right now. And um, they are making us these cute masks. They're making a hundred for us. So each staff member will get two. Um, and it's got the clear plastic here and it meets all of the qualifications or, you know, specs that they've asked. So it's got the little elastic, it's nice little cloth because your local community theater, if you have one, has tons of fabric because they're always making costumes and they always have the elastic. So um, we're partnering with them and they're making us these cute little masks so that we can see our pretty smiles. So reach out to your community partners if you're looking for some cool masks for your staff um, that might help them out as well. So there's my Christy's tidbit for the day to make this worthwhile besides voting. So I appreciate your time. Um, I will start with roll call. So Ashlyn, please unmute yourself and say here. Audubon. Here. Belle Whitley. Here. Big Sandy. Bluegrass. Bourbon County. Uh Betty's here. I don't know if she can unmute herself. I'm sorry, Betty. Thank you, Betty. Bourbon County. Here. Thank you, Melissa. Boyd. Breckenridge. Breckenridge Grayson. Community Action Lexington. Here. Community Action Southern. Carroll County. Here. Central Kentucky. Family and Children's Place. Gateway. Gateway is here. Thank you, Martina. KCEOC. LKLP. Lake Cumberland. Here. Thank you, Alicia. Lincoln. Hey, I'm ready. Thank you. The way that we have strengthened our family units. Uh, Murray. Here. Northeast. Northern Kentucky. Ovec. Here. Owsley, Paducah here, Williamstown, and WKU. Alicia. Christy, I think we had Justin Collett jump on from LKLP. So we've got him. And then Perfect. we've got Rhonda Smith. She's from Northeast. Perfect. Alicia, I just want to thank you for hopping on today. I know that you are very busy. Um, so thank you for hopping on in place um, for Lake Cumberland. I appreciate your time. Oh, no problem. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to John. We've got two items um, of action to um, take care of today and then our closing remarks and announce adjournment. So John, I'm going to turn it over to you, sir. Very good. So we've got a couple of them on our agenda for today and I'm just going to share my screen real quick so that folks can see our items. Uh, first and foremost, we've got our um, strategic plan. Um, I, most of you, not all of you, were with us last week when we were discussing the strategic plan. So just very quickly, I can back over this. That if there are any questions, I know I, any of the other members of that group, uh, several of them on the call with us today, I would be able to answer. Uh, this effort really started last July when we were able to convene our uh, group or sort of a um, day-long retreat, if you will, to get a lot of ideas out. Uh, we were assisted greatly by Kentucky G GOEC, Shepherd, and the team there made sure that through Kentucky's PDG funds, we were able to go through this process. They actually paid for the process, and they put us in touch with and contracted our facilitator at Eastern Kentucky University, uh, Stephanie Ashley, who did a fabulous job. 
sort of leading us through. So as you can see, uh, everyone can see my screen. We've got the uh, final draft. This is a five year. And we grew and examined our mission, our vision, our values. And then we came up with a set of goals and objectives. And the effort really, I think, before the group was to answer some very simple questions that did not have very simple answers. And those simple questions are, who do we as the Kentucky Head Start Association want to be? Um, who, are, who do we recognize that we are now, but what do we want to achieve into the future? And so Steph, our facilitator, really had us star ourselves and to think about who we could ultimately be. And I think they really captured in the vision statement that you see in front of you, every vulnerable child and their family receive exemplary services using the Head Start model. That's an ambitious vision and one that may or may not be attainable. And we found that it really enthused those of us participating in this process that, yeah, this is a far reaching goal, but one that's very laudable and one that I think really gets at the core of what all the members of our association are striving for. In support of that, we have a new statement that I think is very succinct. Uh, SA champions start programs through a common vision, a guided voice, and shared expertise to serve Kentucky's vulnerable children families. It really recognizes what the goal of an association is, and that is to bring together expertise and voices and ideas and to serve one another so that collectively everyone can serve the children and families um, that they're working for. Getting into our core values, KHSA is caring, uh, is a caring, compassionate, member-driven organization that puts the needs of children and families at the center of what we do. So to that end, we zealously advocate for Head Start and the children and families we serve. We embrace the diversity of people, ideas, and models to civility and nonpartisan solutions. We support and work collaboratively with each other, the people we serve, those who make our work possible, adhere to the highest ethical and professional standards in everything we do. And we promote high quality services that are consistent, responsive, and data driven. I think if you're looking at a membership association like just say, there are really a couple of key phrases in there. Number one is member driven. You don't want to be an organization that is entirely driven by staff. You want to be an organization that is driven by the needs and interests of its members. And so that's you. The other item that's important there is data driven. We want to make sure that we're an organization that is just move with the breeze, being with the wind. Uh, we're an organization that has a clear goal, clear uh, direction we want to be moving towards, and that we're following the data. We're not doing things that we think are gonna work. We're doing things that we hopefully are going to be working, data-driven. So those, those areas, vision, mission, and values really led in to identify four goal areas, and those areas effective and efficient structure, funding and search support, for engagement, and voting the Head Start brand. So the first one, effect efficient structure, is about how the organization runs, how it's structured, how it goes about its work. Uh, we say the association will operate under an efficient, consistent, and sustainable organizational structure. Uh, funding and source support, we want to make sure that we can increase our revenues and that they're sustainable so that we can continue as an association to do more and more in meetings of our members. Member engagement, we want to make sure that we're doing more for folks in terms of meeting, sponsored events, networking, and mentoring opportunities. I think one of the things that really resonated with this group was the vast amount of experience that exists in some sector or association, and then so many new folks getting into the Head Start work and really figuring out that we can connect those two. And finally, promoting Start brand, making sure that not only KHSA, but more importantly, Head Start in general, more widely known, that voice is respected, and that finally that voice is called upon. And so then when we got into our draft objectives and measures, I think you can see they're under effective and efficient structure. Uh, like I said, it really has to do with the organization. So what are we doing with our committees? What are we doing with our bylaws? What are we doing with our financial guidelines? Um, 
I think as folks know that when I first came on board, we, we had committees that were meeting, but I don't know that they were really accomplishing that much. And so we really set them aside until we could through a strategic planning process. And I think one of the first things that we'll do once we are able to adopt this plan is to begin visioning what sort of committees do we need to have and who needs to be leading them and how can we get people more engaged, um, how to have a more effective officer structure. Now we have a lot of office. Um, I'm not sure everyone knows what all of those offers do, and we have to ask ourselves sometimes those difficult questions. What do we need to be looking like? What do our bylaws, our voting, our elections, our meetings, all these things? And so then you'll see these draft measures that uh, we've got some ambitious goals, and I still think, despite the fact that it's June, I still think that we can go through and achieve many of these goals that we've set deadlines for at the end of this year. But I will say that this is intended to be an organic document. We may find that despite the fact that it's a five-year plan, we may see that we've achieved all of our goals in two or three years and we need to come back and re-examine and challenge ourselves more. Conversely, we find that there are some areas within the strategic plan that we just haven't been able to accomplish despite our best efforts. So it really is one of those things where, as staff, we're going to be checking in with you and providing you updates on how we're moving with the strategic plan. And then if changes are necessary, those, again, can be uh, driven and dated. When we do funding and re-support, I don't think anybody would argue that KJ needs to have increased revenue and more resources. And so we've identified some areas that we want to really focus on. Um, first and foremost is that we really need annual budgets. I think now we're getting funds in, we're spending them as wisely as we can based on what we've got, but we're not really setting any goals for ourselves. We're not really identifying particular areas in which we need to be doing more work. Uh, we need to be seeing our conference and event profitability. And what I will say for that is um, thus far we have received um, more, I, I would say the same, if not more funding than we received last year already for the conference, despite the fact that the conference has not yet occurred. We've got more people that are interested in part of it in terms of exhibitors uh, and more people that are interested as attendees. So as we move forward through the summer and then into September, you'll be hearing more about that conference. And then finally, increasing development grants and computers to uh, KHS. So you'll see sort of our draft measures down here figuring out how to create sort of that private sector and external membership program. How do we create trainings that KHS can actually use as a profit center? Uh, and then how do we grow on an annual basis um, what we're doing in terms of external funding and uh, profitability? Uh, when we get to engagement, it really is about people and it's about bringing people together. So we want to make sure that we have cohesive internal and external plans so that we can really promote who KHS is. Um, mentioned mentoring or the need to bring new folks together with those that have more experience and then providing more engaging experiences for our members. So that really means that not only do we want to have committees, but we want to make sure that we've got our members of those committees participating 100%. Um, it's not good enough to a committee that has 100 people on it, just pathetically has 100 people on it, and you only get to attend your meetings. Um, you've got to have it or you're doing work that is interesting. You've got to have it doing work that's meaningful and that people are very much engaged in that. I think the same is true when we get to our executive committee and to our board of directors. Some of our meetings are very well attended, others not so. So we need to make sure that we're programming, that we're doing those meetings on a frequency that is not too overwhelming but that we can also bring value uh, to folks so that there's a little bit of their time to participate. Um, when we to promoting the Head Start brand, uh, we really want folks across Head Start in Kentucky to really know the program, uh, to really be able to speak intelligently about it and to be persuasive. Uh, we need to be advocating more at the state level and federal level, and I think we've made good inroads on that. Uh, we want to be an act voice in early childhood education. It's not just uh, as a resource for GOEC or for ECAC, but also to be participating uh, other groups that exist out there, whether it's school systems, whether it's with groups like the Pritchard Committee, uh, ET and others. Effectively use socially, I think we've done a good job of that so far, but I think we could use it more. So you'll see some draft measures are there for those things, and, and that really is the strategic plan. Uh, in many ways, aggressive, in other ways, sort of writing the shit still, um, but um, 
other than that, that's that's really the, the work that we did. And I would thank everyone that participated, not just our potato, Steph Ashley, but Christy and Cindy and Rhonda and Alicia and Carla and Martina and Sally, everybody come together and really commit a lot of their time, both person and via telephone calls over this year to get this doc where it is. So Steve, I'll turn it back to you for any questions. Thank you, John. Does anybody have any questions? All right, if not, if I can get a motion to um, approve the strategic plan as given or an adopt that, please. Is there a motion to adopt our strategic plan? I, Kim Fithian Obeg, I make a motion that we adopt the new plan, please. Thank you, Kim. Is there a second? Second. That's Jessica. Jessica Coffee. Let Community Action Lexington. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is carried. I'm going to turn it back over to John and Cindy now for our officer nominations and election item, please. Very good. So, uh, Cindy, if it's okay with you, I'm going to share my screen because I've got some information I think folks need to see, but they'll still be able to hear you. So, we sent out um, nomination forms. Um, with a deadline and these were the ones received by the end of the day on that deadline um, and we did then receive another nomination that came in later that evening and I will apologize right up front it didn't come from the Head Start director so it went to my junk mail um, but that program did acknowledge it was after the deadline. So we need to treat that as a nomination from the floor because it wasn't submitted with the list um, and, and simply because it didn't come into my regular email. Um, so um, I know Kim, you're on there. Um, whenever um, John guides the motions and, and John, if you'll do that, um, or Christy, um, whoever needs to do that. Um, Kim, if you'll just make that nomination from the floor um, for the person from OVEC. And, you know, we do have that form on record, um, but we need to officially get them on the ballot that'll go out. And then if there are any other nominations. And Cindy, can you tell me what she wanted, what position? I know it was Steve okay. Brewer, but I don't know. I don't know what. I never did see yeah. that nomination form. Yeah, I have it in front of me and it was parliamentarian. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, Cindy, you want to uh, lead us through? Yes, if you would. All right, um, so you'll see on the screen, everyone can see the screen. These are the nominations that were received by the deadline as mentioned, and we had the warrant. We'll come to that when we call for nominations from the floor parliamentarian. So you can see for first president, we have two nominees, Justin Collett, LKLP Head Start, and Rhonda Martin, who's the incumbent, and Bell Whitley Head Start. For secretary, we have one nominee, Tara Niemeister, who's the incumbent from Northern Kentucky Head Start. For treasurer, one nominee, James Peters, who's the incumbent from Northern Kentucky Head Start. And as of now, we have one nominee for parliamentarian, Cindy Graves, who's the incumbent for Murray Head Start. So we'll start with first vice president. Is there a motion to open nominations from the floor, first vice president? I make a motion to open the floor. Kim Fithian makes a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Who was that? Was that Alicia? Yes, I'm sorry. I had my microphone gotcha. over my head. <laughs> no problem. 
All right, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor of opening nominations for first vice president say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, so the nominations for first vice president are now open. Um, are there any additional nominations from the floor for first vice president? I'll ask a second time, is there, are there any nominations from the floor for first vice president? All right, I'll ask a third and final time, are there any nominations from the floor for first vice president? Hearing none, do I have a motion to close nominations for nominations from the floor for first vice president? I make a nomination. This is Mark. All right, I've got a I've got a motion and um, from uh, Martina, and I need a second. I second John Kim Fifty. All right, Kim Fifty and second. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, no. The ayes have it, and nominations for first vice president are now closed. We'll move to secretary. Is there a, a motion to open nominations from the floor for secretary? This is Cindy. Yes, I move. We have a um, from Cindy Graves. Is there a second? This is Christy. A second. Okay, we got a Christy. Uh, got a Christy. Got a second from Christy Lewis uh, to open nominations from the floor for secretary. So nominations are now open. Are there any nominations from the floor for secretary? Are there any nominations from the floor for secretary? All right, third and final time. Are there any nominations from the floor for secretary? Hearing none, is there a motion to close nominations from the floor for secretary? I'll make a motion to close. All right, Rhonda makes a motion. Is there a second? I second, John. Kim makes the motion to second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. The ayes have it and nominations from the floor for secretary are closed. We'll now move to the third office. Treasurer, do I have a motion to open nominations from the floor for treasurer? I feel like I'm running an auction here. Yes. You're doing great, You're doing great Don. <laughs> This is All right. Let me interject. This is definitely something our bylaws need to look at because it requires those three calls for nomination. Yep. Yep. I think I had a motion from Kim. Is there a second? This is Martine. I'll second. All right. We got a second. All those in favor for opening nominations for treasurer say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Nominations are now open. Are any nominations for floor for treasurer? Our second call, are any nomination in the floor for treasurer? And our third and final call, are there any nominations from the floor for treasurer? Hearing none, do I have a motion to close nominations from the floor for treasurer? This is Christy, I make a motion to close. Christy makes the motion, is there a second? Second. We've got a second, I think that was Rhonda. Um, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor for closing nominations from the floor fissures say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Nominations from the floor for treasurer are now closed. And we'll move our final office, that of parliamentarian. Do I have a motion to open it nominations from the floor for parliamentarian? Martine, I'll make the motion. We have a motion from Martine. Is there a second? This is Alicia, I'll second. We have a second from Alicia. All those in favor for opening nominations from the floor for parliamentarians say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries and nations from the floor for parliamentarians are now open. Do we have any nominations from the floor for parliamentarians? John, it's Kim Fifteen from OBEC. I would like yes, to add Becky Brewer from OBEC, please. And can everyone see me typing that on the screen? Yes, thank okay. you. Perfect, there we go. So that's our first call. We'll have a second call. Are there any additional nominations from the floor for parliamentarian? And we'll have our third and final. Are there any nominations from the floor for parliamentarian? 
Given Notice there a motion to close nominations from the floor for parliamentarian. I'll make a motion. Rhonda makes a motion. Is there a second? This Martina, is Alicia. I'll second. I'll second. All right. Second. All in favor for closing nations from the floor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries and nominations for the floor for parliamentary now closed. And Cindy, I will turn it back to any other comment. And I'd be happy to go to our election process. Are there any other comments or questions? Um, the, the plan is for John to um, end the ballots electronically. We worked out a system so that it still meets the requirements of the bylaws to do the voting. Um, so John, it's probably good if you just go over how those ballots- mm -hmm. are Certainly, and all certainly. So, what I, so what I think those of you that have participated in this process before that uh, in order for us to conduct elections, we actually send out three ballots to each of our Head Start grantees. Now, the ballots, those three ballots will go to the director of that program, of each Head Start grant, and up to that director to determine who they wish to distribute those ballots to. Um, I think as we've seen in the past, there's some ambiguity in terms of whether or not the director can or should all those out on his or her own. Uh, but I think what we've seen in the past is that's certainly legitimate. And so you'll have three ballots for each one of these offices sent to, uh, to each one of your offices. So the way we're going to do that is going to be using uh, SurveyMonkey. SurveyMonkey has, has an online being tool. And the way that's going to work, instead of me providing you one link and you voting three times, you're actually going to receive three separate ballots. And that's the way we can do this in order to make sure that we have complete transparency and accountability for this process. Because I don't want anybody to think that somehow anything was manipulated or, or done below board. So um, you will either today or tomorrow receive uh, those ballots electronically. And then there will be a closing date. I'm thinking that it'll either be this Friday or Monday. That'll all be determined in the, in the email that I send to you. But there will be a closing date for those ballots to uh, cast. And then I'll send all the way out and still have a folks with that last 24 hours that have not submitted their ballots. I'll send a reminder to them asking them to do so. Does that sound reasonable and fair to everyone? Yes. Yes. Oh, very good. Then that we will proceed. And uh, Christy, I'll track to you. Thank you, John. All right. Can I get. Um, can I get a motion to accept the slate of officers as presented? Martina, I'll make the motion. Thank you. Can I get a second, please? I'll second, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. So we have our first and our second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Thank you all so much. Um, before we sign off today and I get a motion to adjourn the meeting, I just wanted to make sure that everybody saw the most recent grants that are available on grants.gov. They have a very quick turnaround, but one that caught my eye was one for a fatherhood initiative. So if you've not seen that, um, make sure you log on to grants.gov. Um, it's, it's a very interesting grant application, looks pretty easy to write, but um, that's something that we can always write for to include in our family service piece. So um, it's a five year, it looks like a five year grant and there's three different tiers that you can write for. Um, I think it's due around July 1, so it's pretty quick, but um, an easy and fun one to write for. Lots of, lots of great things listed in there. If you need any help or ideas, shoot me an email and I can let you know how we're writing for that, um, but I'm happy to brainstorm ideas with you all. So does anybody have any other closing remarks or discussions? Uh, Christy, the one thing I would say is that at 2 o'clock today, we do have that web demo from ABC Mouse and Frog Street. I know that we had several people that have signed up for it, so you should have the information via Zoom 
in order to do that. So that's at two o'clock Eastern time today. And it's a special demo just for Kentucky. Yes. Thank you, John, for that reminder. Anybody else, any announcements or conversation? Okay, if not, can I get a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn, Christy. All right, thank you so much, Kim. Y'all have a blessed day and we will see you soon. Thanks everyone.